Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome across to the channel. So today is Bank Holiday Monday for me at the moment, and uh, the time is 21.37, and I'm literally sat upstairs in my bedroom after having a little bit of a get-together with a couple of close friends, and Gemma's been at work all day. So I've been with Abigail, Dominic's at his grandma's, and uh, I've not had a vehicle because Gemma had to drive into work to work at the brew pub this afternoon. And then when she came home at six o'clock, she brought back a couple of our uh, long time friends, Rich and Leslie. So uh, well, we cooked some chicken wings and sat in the back garden and drank some beers. So fortunately for you, I managed to put together the control boxes for the fermentation, or the fermentation control boxes, should I say, rather. And uh, I filmed a little bit of it. I mean, you don't get to see everything inside and out because it took me over 20 minutes just to put a couple of wires in one box. But it makes a decent little bit of a background for a quick and cheeky bank holiday qua 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 Q&A questions and answers. So all I'm going to do is jump onto the comments section on my YouTube creator studio and scroll down and read some of the comments from all of my uh, wonderful viewers and answer any questions that are there. Uh, it's been a couple of three weeks since I did the last one, maybe longer. So there should be a fair bit of scrolling to do. Uh, so let's just get going. I've got the uh, comments in front of me and the first one I've come across is from John Williams and it says... Oh, and by the way, I'm not editing this voiceover. You're getting it as it flows out of my beer-filled gob. <laughs> so, yeah, the first one, anyway. Uh, John Williams, it says, Hey, Harry, I wonder on your chiller if you made a simple updra updraft duct for the hot air. That would be an easy fix for now. The kit is looking great. I can almost smell the brood, eh? Now, that's a good idea. It's talking about the glycol chiller, the squirrel cage fan. I think I called it a squirrel fan the other day, which is daft. The squirrel cage fan uh, just happens to be pointing straight out into the brewery area. And it will uh, become a bit of a pain in the arse. Particularly in winter, um, when it's cold. Mind well, you, I bet it would be nice to have a bit of warm air blowing at us in the winter. But either way, in the summer, and even now, it's just blowing dust around which is not conducive to uh, a hygienic environment in a brewery we don't want dust you don't want breezes all this stuff's going to be picking up dust and particulates in the air and moving the air currents around in the brewery which means that any exposed tanks even if you're just having a peak or dropping some dry hops in or your yeast addition or even during the chill for the boil kettle and you haven't got a tight fitting lid on your boil kettle all of this dust that's floating around in the air can introduce wild yeasts, wild bacteria and basically little nasties that you don't want in the brew. So to have an updraft would be a good idea, but to have an updraft belting into some ducting and then out the building would be even better. So let's keep on scrolling and have a look what we've got in terms of the next question. Alan... Micklerath on the rear brake pad video when I changed the brake pads on the, the Peugeot 3008 that we've got. He says, uh, hi, what size spanners did you use to remove the calipers? <sighs> Good question, buddy. Uh, well, I've got a set of spanners that go from like 4mm right up to 25mm and on the same on, on the Imperial side. I just got the ones that fitted the bolts, mate. Jesus, a good question, that. Oh, gee, I can't remember. Right, let's move on swiftly. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, let's show some more. We're, we're down into about 10 or 15 comments here. Keep going until we see something that uh, would be a good question to answer. Here we go. Dullen Brewing, our good friend Greg. He said, good progress today, Harry. Oh, hello, by the way, Greg. Uh, all those little jobs are coming together quickly now. Hopefully you don't have much left to do to get fully operational. I guess the cold room will be the next big job. 
question mark. Can't wait to see it all finished and running at Harrison's Brewery. Cheers. Thanks, Greg. You're right. The cold room is going to be the next big job. But actually, the big job was creating the glycol chiller in the first instance. So now that that is in position, and uh, once we've filled it up with glycol, it's going to... I'm going to have broken the back of it. So basically, the cold room is just going to consist of four or... Well, it's going to be a cube... Or, um, what do you call a rectangular shaped cube? A rectangular cube of uh, extra therm panels, which are basically between 50 and 75 or 50 and 100 mil thick uh, expanded foam insulating panels that you get in the building industry. And they're uh, 1200 by 2440 millimeters or 8 foot by 4 foot sheets. And we just stack them side by side to build a great big cube, basically a big uh, extra therm shed. And on the inside of it, we'll put some type of uh, cooling matrix. The good thing to use, which I've used in the past twice actually, is a uh, radiator from a car. Any radiator from a car, as long as you can tap off it and then just feed glycol into one end, return valve out the bottom and stick a big fan behind it. And when you run glycol through that heating matrix or cooling matrix, it blows cold air into your cold room and cools your cold room. So that's the plan. Uh, me and Stuart are still in discussion as to where to situate the cold room, but I think it's going to end up being where the stock room is for the pub at the moment, because obviously a lot of that stock is going to want to live in the cold room anyway. And, uh, well... It's we've got shelving and everything there, so we could just build a cold room around it. Okay, let's uh, scroll down a little bit to Captain Sensible Twenty Three or Capt Sensible Twenty Three. He leaves a comment two days ago on the We Are Certified video where we got the license. Freaking yes, and uh, he says congratulations. How do you plan on driving off any DMS during the boil? Uh, you could weld some form of condensate trap to let the condensation drip outside the chimney. Cheers. Right, well, obviously the boil is how we drive off any DMS during the boil. The boil drives off the DMS. But I think really the crux of his question was, how do we prevent any driven off DMS re-entering the boil kettle again? And uh, the trick is, with chimneys on brewery boil kettles, to have... Uh, a downhill slope at some point on your on your chimney um, flue liner or flue pipe. So we go straight up and out of the roof, then that's going to be fine. Everything's straight up and out. But all of the liquid that condenses on the inside of that chimney is going to run straight back down and it's going to drip off the bottom of the chimney straight back into your boil kettle. So what you do is you shoot up a couple of feet and then you go on a downward slope and it doesn't have to be much. Let's say it drops uh, one inch in every foot and you just run sideways or horizontally for about two or three feet, which means then you've got an incline and at the bottom of that incline you have some type of drainage valve to allow any condensate to flush away. On the last brewery, we just had a tank fit in and 15 mil pipe run into a drain. And then you continue upwards again for the steam to exit the building. So you don't have to build a condensate trap uh, in any real terms, in so <laughs> like a ring that goes around the chimney. Just the design. If you think of it like the Nike tick, so you've got the big leg of the Nike tick, uh, which on the top end of it, would be where your chimney is and the bottom where the tick starts to flick back upwards again is where you go back up and out the roof. Um, I found it works. Lots of other rowers use this style and yeah, never had an issue with DMS. The biggest issue is always from diacetyl um, which is conducive to fermentation temperatures. Uh, hence, of course, the building of the fermentation control uh, panels that we've done today. Right, let's keep on scrolling. 
uh, is this one. Hello, Harry. Peter from Sydney. I hear your feet are sore. It isn't go out. It's <laughs> it's gout, I think he's meant to put there. It isn't gout. It's putting milk in your tea instead of scotch in the mornings. Freddie Moore, Medical Hill. Please sign. Thank you. Well, no, it's not gout. I'm pretty confident it's not gout, but... Uh, Bloody hell, scotch in my tea in the morning. I don't think I could handle that. It's probably a little bit, a little bit too much for me. Right, keep on scrolling. Uh, Geraint Jones, how you doing, man? We've met before. I remember you coming to the tap when I had that place. He said the old rollers have served you well. Do you still plan on moving it on afterwards, or will you keep hold of it for expanding the brewery in the future? I 100% plan. I'm keeping hold of them rollers, man. Me and Tom have got some projects lined up. New to homebrew Tom. Check out his channel. Uh, the link is in the doobly-doo. And, yeah, we've got some stuff coming up. Um, maybe not as quick as we would have hoped to have done. We've lost half a year already. Now we're just approaching the sixth month of 2018. And we'd like to have got a little bit of production off the ground. But what we are going to do will involve those rollers and... Yes, when I expand the brewery, dude. I'll be rolling my own tanks. Never again shall I buy. Unless, of course, I get stupidly cheap. Stupidly cheap offer on some tanks that is like a ready-made tank that's cheaper than scrap value of stainless. Then, yeah, I'll buy it. You know, It's not my first rodeo. I didn't just drop off the tree. Right, let's keep on going. Uh, yeah, people are mentioning, have I got gout from the other day when I had pain in my feet? No, literally, I'm a, I'm a fat lad and I went for a run and my feet told me that uh, if we're going to carry that body, then it needs to be a little bit slimmer than it is. So it's just pain from running. Uh, it's all gone now. A little bit of tendonitis in the feet, I think, or something, you know, whatever connects the bones of your feet together. We're playing up a wee bit. Okay. Uh JC Insaniac. How about two rubbish cans? This is on the glycol chiller. How about two rubbish cans? That would get you much more glycol volume. Also, there is a two-part foam mixer that produce a denser foam. The best part is you mix them together, pour them into the bottom, and they will expand to fill the bottom first, and then rise up the sides. The place looks great with all that fresh paint. Well, cheers, JC. Thanks a lot. I think you're the second person to comment on this two-part uh, foam. I've had a look at it before for in trying to insulate the, the roof of the brewery, which is something that I would like to do in the future, particularly uh, as we come to the back end of the year. Um, but I've not found anything that's as cheap as the uh, cans of expanding foam that I get already. I go to a, a facial and soffit supply company, and those cans, I pay about two quid for a can, three quid for a can. I mean, it's really, really cheap stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's two rubbish cans or rubbish bins, I guess, to make a big glycol reservoir. Would have given me a load of room, but what I managed to do, as you've seen now anyway, is uh, just get the 80-litre box and uh, build a plywood surround for it and fill it with foam. It's worked a treat, man. I mean, I only chilled it down to about 2 degrees the other day for testing before I got any glycol in there. And the next day I went to put some zip ties in, I put my hand in the water and it was still totally freezing, man. I froze my knuckles off. And at the moment, I'm also conscious of the cost of monopropylene glycol, which for 40 litres is going to cost me around £140. And I can't really afford much more than that, to be honest. So I guess the idea is... The reservoir that we've got now holds 80, 70, 80 litres. Uh, so that'll give me a 50 to 60% glycol concentration if I mix it with water, which is just good enough for me to chill the glycol down to around minus 15, minus 16 degrees on the, uh, on the freeze point, which means I can have the tank at about minus 5, minus 6. Obviously whatever you want the tank to sit at, let's say minus 5, then you have to have about an extra 10 degrees um, of capacity to not freeze the glycol because 
on the condenser it's going to be particularly more colder and it will still freeze up around the fins on the condenser there is uh, a bit of information out there on the internet I don't have it on the, in front of me to point you into the right direction but if I find it or when we do the glycol mix I promise I'll discuss it in a video so you know what I'm on about I'm, I know I'm being slightly sketchy here on it but uh, yeah the glycol concentration, you don't want pure glycol because it's actually quite inefficient in transferring heat. You have to mix it with water. But the more water you have in the mix, then the more susceptible your mix is to freezing. And it depends on what temperature you want to chill down to. Like I say, I'll cover it in another video if I can. Uh, Mojo Nojo 3 says, Why on earth didn't you just buy a reconditioned pub remote glycol chiller? They're only about 200 odd quid. Well... Several reasons, dude. I mean, I got the AC unit back in 2014 and we were going to chuck it out when we bought a new one for Idle Valley Brewery and then this one I salvaged instead of binning it. So I've breathed it back into life for exactly zero pounds. And, uh, well, the plywood I already had, but even if I had to buy it, it's 25 quid. The polyurethane foam was about 10, 15 quid for all the cans I used. And it was five ninety nine for that plastic Rubbermaid container. So, yeah, 200 quid is expensive, man. Uh, and with the remote glycol chiller, pub glycol chiller, seriously, it can't do what this machine does. It will not cool as much as this machine does. It has so much more BTU cooling power than any of these uh, Cornelius pub chillers they're crap and they work on the basis of an ice bank so uh, there's no glycol involved in these and uh, well there are in some of them actually I still like the man with the orthopedic leg I stand corrected but they just don't have the cooling capacity I can chill a massive cold room and fermenters with the kit that I've got and uh, I don't think they'll cut the mustard Right, David Eastwood asks, Are you planning on using a whole leaf hop filter on the centre outlet for the boil kettle? What about having a little outlet on the base of, just off centre so you can draw off any warp from the trub cone made by the whirlpool? Maybe build a little dam in front of it so you don't pull any hops through. Yeah, good idea. So I'm going to use leaf and pellet. And the idea is that uh, we're going to stick a little extractor arm in the bottom of the boil kettle, just like I have done on the fermenters, which will allow me to pull all of the sweet wort, or bitter wort as it would be then, uh, from the boil kettle without interrupting the cone of hops in the centre after the whirlpool. So uh, that's about it, folks. I'm literally sat here with a turtle's head poking out, so I'm going to sign off and uh, nip to the lavatory before I have an accident, and we'll see you all tomorrow on the vlog. Cheers.